His bundle pacing has been around for, you know, several decades. Uh, however, there's been a recent resurgence over the course of the last three years uh, that there's been heightened interest uh, in his bundle pacing. There have been multiple small studies uh, in the recent past, but more recently, about a week ago, at the American College of Cardiology, there was a late breaker, which actually looked at his bundle pacing in comparison to right ventricular pacing in a substantial number of patients. They looked at 330 patients with his bundle pacing versus 500 patients with uh, right ventricular pacing, uh, and they followed them up longitudinally, and they looked at the primary endpoint of uh, reduction in mortality, heart failure hospitalization, and the need to upgrade to biventricular pacing. And interestingly enough, that study found that there was uh, an improvement in the primary endpoint in his bundle pacing versus the right ventricular pacing by almost 31%. Uh, what's more interesting that this effect was heightened when you looked at patients who needed more than 50, more than 20 percent right ventricular pacing. So patients who got more right ventricular pacing actually did better with his bundle pacing. And the largest driver for this was reduction in heart failure hospitalization. Now this is great data, and recently also there's been a, 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 you know his bundle pacing has been evaluated in patients who require CRT uh, or patients who have left bundle branch block. Uh, and there is early data to suggest that in these small subsets of patients, there's a common theme uh, that his bundle actually does cause reverse remodeling, improves ejection fraction, uh, and tends to improve their quality of life and their NYHA class. So, so really data suggesting that there's a resurgence with interest and with clinical data to support it. Uh, however, some of the complexities that remain unanswered uh, till date are what is the long-term outcome with his bundle pacing? Because none of the studies have been randomized. Uh, none of them have longitudinal follow-up for more than a year or two. And I think that's a major limitation in terms of adoption at this point in time. Uh, it certainly is elegant, it's upstream, and it's physiological. But I think there are many unanswered questions as to what is the change in pacing threshold with his bundle pacing over time? What is the impact of progressive conduction tissue disease on his bundle pacing over time? Um, and what are, the, what, are the, what are the failure rates in, in the hands of people who have not done it before? And what are the challenging anatomical variants that can impact the success of his bundle pacing? So there are a lot of issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, but nevertheless, I think it's an additional tool in our armamentarium uh, that will certainly, I think, help a subset of patients. So I'm really looking forward to the advances that come up over time over the ensuing years.